<laughs> but you, when you started off and then you got Kevin Hart's um, show earlier, how did that come about? What was that like? meeting like the most famous man on the planet was that daunting and then since then you've gone on to do so many things it's like probably you you look back at it like oh, whatever he's just another celebrity right i mean a little bit he's very funny like i was surprised by how funny he was the whole time yes he's it's it's crazy. i'm a kevin hart fan i it's, know he is, he's another one who gets a lot of hate but it's like yeah go do what he does and come back it's to me so a lot jarring of, how funny he is consistently like, everything yeah, he he's said, just a naturally fucking funny fuck right he's he's as funny as like when you actually meet a very gorgeous person from instagram and they're just as gorgeous in person yeah like that wasn't a filter wow yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. wow your, your face is completely symmetrical this is insane or even when you see like an nba player and you're like you are so fucking tall yeah it's like you know that tall but when you see them you go fuck you. yeah and it was it was just he was very sweet and he was just like consistently fun and like funny in a time crunch because clearly he had something else he needed to do because he's he's one of those dudes that just you don't even know he's doing it, but he's stacking so many things so mm. right now he's filming a tv show for comedy central i'm sure he had to like run to the like the most popular radio station in town and do an interview promote and then come back oh, and then yeah. yeah promote a special then come back and watch us do the show so just yeah just when he was interviewing us at harold's he was like chill like joking around everything was uh was really fun and then you know obviously had to go do his thing and then when we did the show which might have even been the next day i don't remember but we had to do the show he came back and i was just like how's this man not tired <laughs> yeah. you know he's at the gym i watched his tv i watched yeah. his documentary remember he made a movie about himself i guess <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah which is funny because then he he, he did this thing i guess he got drunk and then he, he made fun of he had a fight with one of the guys that worked with him do you remember that part of yeah it? yeah on the and plane he was like what would you be doing without me you'd be doing nothing or something and then they left it in for some reason you're like dude you could just you could have easily just did you ever see the not story? done that you could have just ev- like if, if I'm not to edit a movie about myself, I'm yeah. removing any part of me being a dickhead. But you know what though? I will say it it removing any part of you being a dickhead means that when you finally yeah. can't control a narrative and yeah. you're a dickhead, people yeah. are like, Wow. Yeah, okay. Wow like you So, so when yeah, those tweets you, when those tweets came out about him, everyone had him as this little guy with the with the rock. I they think he's like a little Jumanji fun boy. And then he actually was a was a comic in two thousand and eight. Yeah, it's it, yeah, it's like it's like you have to leave some realm of possibility for you to be human mm. in places. I think that that's really important, and it may make people like you less, but those people are going to like you less no matter what. Mm-hmm. And I and I think that holding it's why we're always disappointed in the president. It's yeah. like they spend two maybe even three sometimes years quietly campaigning and then openly campaigning like they're the guy yeah right and then they actually have the job and they're not much better than the last guy Mm -hmm. or then they're or then they're better and then they're worse or then they're better in the first term and then second term they like sort of chill out or maybe they have a secret stroke who knows like (laughs) like like that thing is is why people always end up getting let down anyway whereas if i'm very open with you yeah i i cut a lot of that stuff out to begin with it, it would be like if you changed your whole set to be nothing but cookie cutter yeah then you finally get the the big opportunity that comes with being like widely famous as a cookie cutter person and you're like now nah, i want to do my like my real act yeah and then like, you go no. out there and like half of the people are like what what about the do the toaster strudel job? Yeah, like, yeah, like, like yeah. they don't even it doesn't even register. Whereas if you're you the whole time, people will. Yeah, I think that ha- that ha- tends to happen in England a lot. I'm not sure it's still now, but they would have TV shows that would make people famous pretty f- big overnight. They still had these shows like Michael McIntyre Showcase, or whatever. But you have to be um, clean on TV. So then these people would all blow up and be famous, like nearly household names. And then people go see them and they'd be talking about fucking pussy farts or whatever. And everyone's like, what is this? This is not the smut I saw on TV. It's like, yeah, because I'm not allowed. Mm-hmm. It's a very selective thing. 